Hi guys, it's Chris at Cork and Crown, back with another side at a try, still in my kitchen. We'll be back in my shed, shed very soon, I promise. For myself as much as anything, I just like being in my shed. Firstly because, I don't know, it's a cider shed. It's, it's for cider, it's my cider place if you like. And secondly, we cook in here, we were cooking here just now, I can smell what was being cooked, it smells nice, but it's hard to taste stuff in a space where other things are being cooked. Because you get that in your senses and it can be, it can detract from the product, if you like, from the side that you try to smell and taste, etc. Anyway, another sample, another sample. This is from Somerset, North Somerset, I believe. Impins 8. Uh, so obviously quite bright, filtered, nice gold colour. One suspects this will have side wrapples in it. Let's see, read what it says on the back. Um, Impins 8 side is made from eight varieties of bittersweet apple creating something rather special. Grown within a medieval deer park, these traditional standard orchards play a part in a cider making process that stays true to the cider maker's art. Okay, that's all it says. So quite interesting. This is the only thing they do in Pinze, as far as I can tell, from what I can see. So they've got eight varietals, eight varieties of bittersweet in, hence the eight. But is this all they do? So every year they're blending the same eight bittersweet apples from um, apples from the same orchard to make basically the same thing or if they're doing that every year is the variety is the difference all to do with vintage so as long as you've got a control running see so the same thing every time bottle it and then you can see exactly what you know the climate's done the, the weather that year whatever's done to the side it's quite unusual just to do this um, but the planet disorders i think on their website said 1967 it's like fourth generation so they've been doing this for a long time so yeah, I don't know, maybe there's an impings, imp, impings 6 and an impings 7 and an impings 4, depending on what they decided to blend that year. Or they always blend all of them together, eight varietals, to get this. Lots of questions. Lots of questions. Obviously filtered. I believe this is sparkling. There's only one way to find out. So let's find out. Yep, that is sparkling. I suspect it's bottle conditioned. Uh, sorry, uh, false carbonated. There's not a hint of any sort of um, uh, yeast in here at all, nothing at all. So I assume it's false carbonated and not bottle conditioned. Let's pour it out. So yeah, there you go. Very bright. It is gold, but just bordering on amber. Just bordering on amber. Just a hint of it. And I always like that. Gold's nice, but I do like when you start to get that amber colour inside it. Maybe because I associate it with sort of side apples, tannic apples, you know, that's maybe why. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's give it a sniff. Delicate nose, really delicate nose. Really delicate nose. I mean, I'm getting something, but. Real, real delicate hints of ripe apple. There's almost like a minerality on the top. Not really taking a lot of acidity on the nose. Very subtle, almost like a greenness to it, I want to say. What that means, what does green smell like? I don't know, it's like a Noam Chomsky thing, isn't it? Yes, Chris. All right, let's try it. Okay, so yeah, these are bitter sweets. There is tannin in there. Astringency on my teeth, which I like. That's a good thing. Um, there was residual sugar in this, or it's back sweetened. One of the two. I'm not sure which, but it doesn't feel cloyingly sweet. You know, it feels like a nice, a nice sweet. It, feel, it feels like a natural sweetness, whether it's you know um, sucralose or sugar or whatever. I'm not sure, but minerality. Nice, clean, ripe apple. Not really any funk. I suspect it's aged in steel. Um, hint of, the merest hint of cheese, I want to say. Um, but I mean, the merest hint. The, it's just like there. I'm, I think I'm looking for stuff because it's quite delicate. But just somewhere lurking in there. There's a tiny dairy cheese element, I want to say. So I'm saying it. Delicate, 
refreshing, easy drinking. I like the fact it's got that tan in there to give it structure. Without that, it would be blah. It's not blah because of that. But it's, it's a light, easy drinker. It really is. Um, 6% hides it. Doesn't feel like a 6% drink at all. That's the problem with cider though. Often it doesn't taste anything like as strong as it is. Anything like as strong as it is. The 8.0s we get regularly from, say, you know, Ross of wine. And they just, it just I mean, it's pushing wine territory. And you drink it like, oh, this is fine. I mean, it could be like 4%. You wouldn't know the difference until you fall down in the gutter. Um, this is fine. It's a nice cider. It's delicate. It's tasty. I'll happily drink it. It's not exciting me. It's not exciting me. Um, but I'm enjoying it. Do you see the distinction? There is a distinction to be made. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm a thrill seeker, if you like, when it comes to cider. Um, I want things to really stimulate and excite me. This is a perfectly good cider. It's absolutely tasty. Compared to most things you'll pick up, it kicks their ass. But when you get to the, the top tier of cider making, the, 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 the very tiny parameters can be different between like good and brilliant, and good and great, you know. And I feel this is good. It's not great, but it's very nice cider. And they're doing something good, these people on their farm. It's their own orchards. It's a family operation. Good on them. Um, it is quite clean. I wonder if they're using wild yeast. I wonder if they're using steel. I wonder if they're um, back sweetening. Lots of questions. I feel like they're all possible. They're all possible. Okay. There you go. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for watching. As always, just a reminder, um, Kingston Black Tasting on uh, Saturday the 27th on Instagram with Albert at Ross and Y. I'm going to be opening it. He's going to be opening it. We're going to be drinking it. Get yourself a bottle. I'll have it at Broccoli Market if you're local. Get yourself a bottle from me. Sit down and open it with a guy who made it. Albert. He's a great guy and worth listening to. Yeah. All right. Until the next time, guys. Thank you for joining me. Cheers.